Well, good morning again, guys. I'm continuing my trip around Tasmania, and today I'm going through some beautiful, absolutely gorgeous little country towns. And first up, I've come to a little place called Evandale. And I'll tell you what, it is, it's like it's out of a storybook. I've just driven through there, and it's like a traffic jam. It's like driving through Burke Street in Melbourne. But I'll tell you what, it is gorgeous. They're old country style buildings. I had breakfast at the bakery there and it was absolutely wonderful. There's a market going on, a typical country Sunday market and, the, and the, it is absolutely packed. And uh, you see that all around the place. So I'm gonna drive around a little bit more and look at some of the other country towns uh, on my journey to my next nightscape shooting location. So last night I shot at Ben Lomond National Park. It was minus three degrees. I think that's probably the coldest place that I've ever shot nightscapes. It was probably another minus three with the wind chill factor. So I don't know what it was, but it was so cold. And I actually put hand warmers inside my gloves. You can see here, these are the ones you're supposed to put in your shoes and they stick. But the problem is, they lasted for all of about 15 minutes. Um, so it wasn't much good to me. So one of the things I have to do today is go and buy some more hand warmers. Um, a lot of people use hand warmers for warming up the lenses on their cameras. Uh, not me, I use proper lens warmers for that. I'm gonna use the hand warmers to keep my hands and my feet warm. So on my journey today, I'm gonna to find somewhere that sells hand warmers. Okay, so speaking of my journey today, I've already worked out where I'm going to be going tonight to shoot my nightscapes. Remember a while back, I found this little boat shed, this stone boat shed on the edge of the ocean. And I said to myself, look, I really want to get back here while I'm going back. I'm not that far away from that particular location now. So tonight I'm going back there. I've checked the weather forecast it's gonna be fine. Uh, a little bit of wind around, but the, the, the sky is gonna be clear. So I'm going back there to shoot the Milky Way over that boat shed, and I'm really actually looking forward to that. Now, um, so I've got all day to spend, and I'm going to uh, reconnaissance around, look at some towns, as I said, and, and just relax a little bit. To be honest, I'm quite tired. I've been on the go for a week and a half, touring around, and it's quite draining, particularly sleeping in the car, and uh, just you know, feeding myself and looking after myself on the run uh, takes a fair bit of energy. So I need to relax a bit. My back's killing me. So uh, let's get going and have a look at some more country towns. experience this is. I'm up at the Cataract Gorge at Launceston and I'm on the chairlift. So I'm doing the tourist thing today. Have a look at this place. It's just absolutely phenomenal. It's a really good bird's eye view from up here as well. Hello, do you have almond milk latte? I do. Could I please have a small almond milk latte? No, we only have the mug or the takeaway. Oh, take away. Yeah, take yeah. away. Thank you very much. Oh, 
Well, this is absolutely beautiful. What better place to sit and have a cuppa than just smell the roses. I'm sure you've probably heard me talk about this plenty of times before, but I think to be really efficient at photography, you need to spend time in your own space, just relaxing and breathing in the, the fresh air and the environment and energizing yourself. And I think that's what I need to do on this trip. I've been flat out. I've been driving and driving and my back sore. I've been climbing rocks in the middle of the night, shooting nightscapes. And that's what I'm here for and that's what I love doing. But I need this downtime. In fact, in a place like this where it's just beautiful, relaxing, and, and just the natural environment. And that's the thing I've loved probably the most about Tasmania. It's just the, the natural environment here is just so gorgeous. And because I'm so far away from home, it gives me the chance to meditate a little bit and relax. And, and I've got my own space and my own time. I, I don't have to be anywhere at any particular moment. So I'm going to shoot that old stone building tonight. Looking forward to that. And then this time I'm just energizing uh, drinking the coffee and having a bit of a cookie. By the way, you may have noticed I haven't had any rum balls lately. I'm on a bit of a modified no sugar diet. So I had to go to the supermarket and buy these things. I've got nuts and I don't know what this thing's called, but it doesn't taste too bad. So that's what I'm on at the moment. Okay, so I finally arrived back at the beach where I'm gonna shoot the old stone ruin. I'm frantically rushing around getting a time-lapse camera ready. So I'm gonna head over there now. I've got to put a lens warmer on that. Uh, I don't think it's gonna rain, so that'll be good. But I wanna make sure that's going soon because it's getting late. There won't be too much more daylight. Then I'm gonna come back, um, have something to eat, and just wait for it to get dark and take my other camera over. So let's get that time-lapse set up. Okay guys, well, here we are. It's been a bit of a mad rush to get here. Uh, the sun's actually gone down. I wish I had had a bit more light on the, on the building, but that's okay. I've got my Z6 here with the Lauer 15 mm F2 set to aperture priority. It's doing a day to night time-lapse. And so I've got a lens warmer hooked up. I've got it, uh, beautiful clouds there in the background that you can see down there. And that's over the Freycinet National Park. So when I was here the other day, the day before I was here, I'd been shooting over there. So I've done a full circle. I've gone right around the state here. Anyway, so um, I'm looking forward to seeing how this goes. It's gonna go for three hours. There's about a, uh, it's, it's about an 8% crescent moon. I don't think it's gonna help me. Typically with something like this, having a little bit of moonlight would be helpful because that would help light up the building. When the sun goes down, the building's gonna be in relative darkness. So, but I'm really happy about those clouds down there. That's the thing that I like the most about this time lapse, because they'll be moving through. The stars, of course, will appear uh, when it gets dark, and the camera is going to automatically adjust the, the shutter speed and then the ISO to capture the sky. Well, that's the plan. Anyway, I'm just going to leave that there. I'm going to come back later and shoot single images here. I can't wait because this as you can see, is an absolutely awesome subject for light painting. There's a bit of cloud down there, but that's not going to upset me at this point in time. It looks like it's going to clear beautifully. So you can see down below, I've got the lens warmer, battery operated. I don't trust these cold Tasmanian conditions. Now I've traveled an awful long way to get this series of shots. So I'm hoping the weather holds out. It's looking pretty good. Just have a look at that gorgeous color in those clouds down there in the background. And the mountain range over there, it's just got that nice golden glow at the moment. Oh, wow. I reckon this is gonna be a good night. Really, really looking forward to it. And the other thing, it's not as cold as it has been. I've come across from the other side of the state it's a lot colder and a lot higher altitude. So it's gonna be cold, but probably not quite as cold as what I've had the last few nights. So as you can see, it's a fair old walk to get over there from where I've parked the car. Hey, I'm not whinging, <laughs> I'm getting a bit puffed. I'll tell you what, this trip, if nothing else, 
will probably have improved my fitness levels because I've been walking up and down hills, around beaches, and uh, all the other things that go with it. And I guess I'll probably do it more than once tonight. So um, anyway, I'm gonna have something to eat right now and get my gear all set up for the next shoot. Now, by the way, I did get to the supermarket today and buy a heap of hand warmers. So uh, as I said, it's not all that cold here, but who knows when I might need these. I've actually got some body warmers as well as hand warmers. So uh, I found in the past that with these things, you just put them on your chest when you're asleep and it just keeps you, your body circulating a little bit better, the warmth. So anyway, I didn't buy too many. We'll see how we go. I'm sure they'll come in handy a bit later on. Well, I've got to say, this is a little bit more civilized than a lot of the times when I've been making something to eat for dinner. I've got this beautiful table and chairs here so I can actually sit like a normal person would rather than sit on the back tailgate of my car. But anyway, so I'm boiling up the jug. I've got, what have I got tonight? Butter, chicken and rice. Now, last time I, <laughs> I had this, I forgot to squeeze the rice up because these are microwave meals. So they're designed to go in a microwave. Now I don't have a microwave, of course, so I'm using a jet boil. So for that to work, I've got to crunch it up in my fingers. Hey, you can see I'm not much of a chef, can't you? So tonight, I'm gonna to get that organized. Oh, what a beautiful spot this is. The sky's clearing. And that's exactly what it's meant to do tonight. All right, here we go. I'm not very good at this. Cooking is not something I enjoy. I enjoy eating, but not cooking. Does that make sense to you guys? Oh man. Anyway, this is gonna be a workout for my wrists and my thumbs, I think. I think I might be getting the hang of this. Oh, but oh for the good old days when all I needed was a rumble to keep me happy. Mmm. Yeah, that's good. So once again, I'd like to thank Brett Wood, who's a great Australian landscape photographer, for sharing this location with me. Now, Brett's based up in New South Wales, and he runs all sorts of photography workshops and tours around the countryside. And uh, I saw an image of him running a workshop here Oh, it was only about a month ago, I reckon. And so I, I just happened to mention it and he, and he shared with me the exact location. So thanks, Brett. I hope I can do the image justice for you, mate. All right, the rice is not cluggy tonight. So I think I must have done something right. Okay, well, the first drama that happened tonight, I waited the three hours for my time-lapse camera to finish so I walked all the way back over there to um, retrieve it because I realized that um, I can't carry all this stuff in one trip so I may as well just come and go anyway when I got there I found the camera and the tripod laying on the ground yes a, a, a really big gust of wind came up um, and blew it over now I thought I had it fairly fairly rigid but obviously not rigid enough and I thought to myself, oh no, have I done damage? Well, it doesn't seem to be. The, the bottom plate here is a little bit loose and I, I, I don't think there's anything wrong with the camera as such. I'm just, just looking at it, but I can't see. Um, I'll do a bit more testing on that, but the, the camera works. The lens is not broken. I think this lens warmer helped because it landed sideways. It didn't land end on. So you can see I've got a great big lens warmer here on the on the front of the lens. Now this is a Lauer 15 millimeter, it's a good solid lens. I'm really glad I didn't have my Nikon 20 mil f1.8 uh, Z mount uh, because that's a bit precious to me. This Lauer, um, I have a love-hate relationship. I, I, don't, I don't think it's very sharp to be honest, but it's the widest angle I've got natively to fit the Z6. Anyway, 
I checked it out and the time lapse works all the way through. In fact, it's absolutely awesome time lapse until it falls over sideways. And, and the funny thing about it is, when it falls sideways, you can still see the Milky Way core. It's just gone sort of exactly in the right place. I'll show you now and you might get a bit of a laugh out of it. So it wasn't too bad, was it? But it's a little, you gotta laugh. You really have to laugh. Things don't always go to plan, you know? And if something like that happens um, and nothing's broken, well, it's, it's a lesson learned. I think, you know, I'll weigh the tripod down. Even if it's calm, when I start, I've got to weigh it down, especially when you're gonna leave it there for three hours. Now, um, interestingly enough, that is captured in camera, in movie mode, uh, in aperture priority. So it's time-lapse movie mode on the Nikon Z6, aperture priority. The camera adjusted everything automatically. I left the aperture at f2.8 and I'm wrapped in the, in the way that that comes up. Smooth, there's no flickering. Love it. Now, second drama. I don't know if you can see behind me, there's spots on this window. It started to rain. <laughs> oh, I tell you what, why am I having so many dramas in Tasmania? I think it's because of the uh, I'm near the ocean here and while well, the weather's a bit more volatile than what I'm used to but uh, I've been looking at my weather apps and clear outside it's telling me that it's going to clear up by about nine o'clock so currently it's about eight o'clock so I'm just going to wait it out and see what happens hopefully the next thing you see from me is going to be out there on location
Well, I've shot so many compositions tonight. It's been brilliant. A little bit windy and unfortunately some of the, uh, there's some beautiful grass tussocks here, but they're blowing all over the place and I don't think I'd be very successful in trying to shoot them up too close. Doesn't matter when they're in the background, but uh, as a foreground subject matter, I think not quite right. But anyway, look, I am so wrapped with this shoot tonight. Uh, I've gone around in different angles and I've used different techniques. I've done a lot of panoramas, as I mentioned. I've also done some stacking, but the other thing I've done is some long exposure foregrounds, uh, just to give it uh, that real ambient look. The other thing that I've done is I've used my Z96 panel with the orange CTO gel on the front as a low level light for the vast majority of these shots. Uh, so it, it's just been on its lowest setting and I've been able to put it off on an angle so that it gives a nice glow to the scene. It makes it look a little bit more uh, natural, even a little bit moonlight perhaps. But anyway, really, really happy with this shoot now, but I'm so tired. I think what I'll do is wait till tomorrow morning and wrap this video up then. So I'll see you a bit later on. Well, good morning. Welcome back to this amazing location. Now, I showed you what I took last night and I'm absolutely wrapped with all of those images. But one thing, the story does not finish there. I decided it was such a beautiful clear night that at about five o'clock in the morning, the Milky Way core was stretching across that Western sky. So I got out and shot some more images. Yeah, I'm crazy. I know that. But I got the Star Tracker out. Now I've got the Star Tracker here with me. Haven't even brought it out of its box for the whole trip until now because it was so beautiful and so clear. And I did a, um, a tracked panorama of the sky behind the old building down there in the west. Took some light painted foregrounds and I absolutely love those images, such a bonus. Anyway, thanks so much for joining me on this adventure. Um, I continue the journey today. I've got a few more days here in Tasmania and I'm gonna make the most of that time. And uh, look, I'd love you to comment down below, give me a thumbs up. If you wanna to subscribe to my channel, I would all really love to have you on board with that. So take care. I'll look forward to seeing you on my next travel around this amazing place, Tasmania. I'll see you later. Thank you.